Hi, I'm David Boland, Product Marketing Manager at Ritsu Company based in Morgan Hill, California. Today I wanted to show you our PIM Master. And our PIM Master is revolutionary in that we introduce distance to PIM where we can find the source of the PIM. What I first want to show you is a traditional PIM measurement that can be made on our SiteMaster handhelds. If I hit the measure button here, we're going to measure the PIM level of an actual PIM signal on a PIM, on a PIM standard that we have here set up in the booth. And we see that the PIM level rose to above the limit line and that means we have a failure and now we need to find out where the PIM is. I now know I have PIM but where is it? And that's where we now have what we call distance to PIM, a new measurement capability that we've added that will tell you where the PIM is. Now the setup we have here today is only going to show PIM at zero feet. We don't have any cable hooked up, but we show that the maximum PIM is at zero feet and tailing off meaning there's no other PIM sources. If there happened to be a second PIM source, there would be another peak in that uh, graph and it would show us the multiple PIM sources that might occur. The PIM generator down here on the floor is, is generating the CW signals that provides the test signals to do the PIM testing. And what's the uh, significance of power power PIM testing? So we have learned that PIM is power sensitive and that the more power you have for a high powered base station the more likelihood of finding the PIM. The PIM may only occur certain times of the day when the, uh, the traffic is at its highest and you get peak power out of the cell site and maybe uh, when you go back in the maintenance window if you can't simulate that same power you may not be seeing it. So we believe in having a PIM tester that emulates the real world power. Now there might times when, so we actually put out up to 40 watts of power for, for each PIM tester. What are the other power ranges for PIM testing? So we can do also 20 watts and 30 watts so for lower power uh, antenna systems we can also put, do the 20 watts because you don't want to stress it beyond what the, the component is really seeing because then that would be a test that's too severe for the conditions that it's operating in. What are some of the typical um, root causes of PIM interference? PIM uh, is usually related to the antenna cabling system. The antenna itself could have bad uh, joints inside that cause PIM. The connectors in the antenna assembly could be corroded or could have dirt in them that was uh, there at time of installation. And unfortunately, a line sweep will not find those sources. So PIM testing and line sweep testing are mutually exclusive from each other. Also, there could be external PIM from the system, uh, which can be caused by near building obstructions. Like on rooftop installations, we find a lot of external PIM that can cause uh, PIM to be reflected back into the antenna system. And our distance PIM solution can also tell you how far beyond the antenna that the PIM source is located. Why do carriers care about PIM? So the reason that carriers uh, worry about PIM is the way the frequency bands are set up, the PIM frequencies, which is passive intermodulation, is occurring in the receive band of the uh, receivers of the cellular base stations. And if it's strong enough, it'll actually knock the receiver off the air. Uh, 